Lynn puts it up. Bang! Durant! The lead! Tie game with five seconds remaining! Defended by Simmons. Is this the dagger? Oh! Iguodala to Curry. Back to Iguodala. Up for the layup. Oh, blocked by James! They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! All right, what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back here today to another episode of the Just Fall On Podcast. And today, we're gonna do a fun ranking for you guys. So over on my Strauss channel, I'm kind of constructing a top 30 ranking, so every NBA team of their young cores. So I think for this podcast episode, I was like, you know what, let's workshop this. Let's rank the top 10 of what I have right now. Would love for your guys' feedback on YouTube or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, let me know what you guys think on Twitter. It's going to be fun. It is definitely challenging um, because I'm pretty much taking into account anybody that's 24 years old or younger. So I wanted to have a cutoff. Usually there's the top 25 under 25. So I thought 24 um, was a cut, like a good cutoff. So like Luca, who just, uh, just turned 25, would have been carrying that Dallas Mavericks young core. Um, they are off the list. Like no Mavericks because Luca's 25. Um, I do take into account current draft capital but it's not the end all be all it's more of a tiebreaker if i feel like two teams are within each other um and if i'm like leaning i'm like all right you know what like i like both of these young cores the exact same i'll look at their future first round picks pretty much till like 2030 over the next six years um and that's kind of like what the criteria we are going for this so there's going to be a couple honorable mentions towards like the back half of the top 10 it got very challenging i like the last i feel like three spots could have gone to six different teams so you know that's gonna be tough because you're ranking like either the quantity of these young core players or the quality um so you got to rank like individual guys there then obviously you're looking at draft capital i also want to take into account how these teams are at drafting as well because if these teams aren't good at drafting what like do these picks matter for if they're not going to hit on these guys just based off a historical track record so if you guys do enjoy the content i'd appreciate you dropping a thumbs up on youtube or leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You guys on YouTube killed uh, the uh, the bracket episode, so thank you for that. It was the most watched uh, video on this channel, and it's in its short history. Um, so yeah, we can kind of just get right into this. Don't want to waste much of your time. Um, I don't think there's anything to really talk about. I mean, the NBA is kind of getting towards that last stretch of the season. We have some good playoff races right now. And then uh, you guys are probably seeing this on Wednesday the 20th. So we saw um, Virginia just completely not show up at all. I mean, who's shocked there? Losing to Colorado State is the play and We'll get uh, some more play-ins tonight. Um, and then we get March Madness tomorrow. Like, let's freaking go, man. It's, it's a great time to be a basketball fan for sure. So we're going to start off. We're going to go one to 10. Um, so um, number one, OKC Thunder, as you'd probably expect. Um, so this is funny because I'm like going into this like they're a clear one because Shea, Shea's 25 now. So they're still number one with no Shea. They got Jalen Williams at number tw- um probably is their best young piece, like tied for one, like depending. But either way, he's 22 years old. He's from the um, 2022 draft class. And the dude is just a flat out bucket this year. He's averaging like 19 points on insane efficiency, 50 plus percent from the field, 40 plus percent um, from three, 80 plus percent from the line. He's a really good playmaker. He's a solid rebounder. And the dude is a hardworking defender. And I think he's improved so much from his rookie year. And I I don't know, maybe I got to watch more Santa Clara basketball because I didn't know much about Jalen Williams um, coming into to the 2022 draft and like Sam Presti sure did because this dude is as good of a building block as you can get as like a secondary building block as you can get I should say uh just him behind um Shea Gilgis Alexander um and then they also have Chet Holmgren who's 21 years old playing his real rookie season also from the 2022 draft class like J-Dub and he's averaging 16 or basically 17 points eight rebounds two and a half blocks a night is already like a top 10 rim protecting defender in his rookie season or borderline top 10 he's efficient from the field he's shooting 39 percent from three on four and a half attempts a night like that is wild he's a good free throw shooter as well chet is a really good player um he's a good playmaker as well for somebody with his size and he, those are like two great building blocks and it's not just like them alone that makes okc number one because pretty much almost 
a lot of these teams outside like number one have a top end guy that's better like a lot of these other guys at two at three at four their best guy hasn't graduated from this like 24 year old threshold like shea has it's also the depth they have with their young core they got lou dort who is still 24 years old which i was really shocked to know he turns um 25 in a month so he makes the criteria of this video and i was like wow lou dort is still just 24 years old still a really good three and d guy shooting 41 percent from three this year and you don't want to be put in the Dorcher chamber i mean uh, like Josh Giddy definitely does not have like the prospect prestige than he did like even after last year obviously there's the weird off the court stuff this year um and honestly he's been kind of bad this year for like his standards obviously he was had so much momentum in the playing tournament last year um and was a good playmaker a phenomenal rebounder got his scoring like 16 and a half points and it dropped to 15 or excuse me 11 a night um five and a half attempts or excuse me five and a half points five points down and then is also taking like four and a half attempts less um he's like the free throw shooting has gotten better so it's like encouraging that he could maybe be somewhat of a good three-point shooter eventually but i feel like giddy could potentially get traded but he's 21 years old and he's like the fourth guy i mentioned um case Allen wallace um dude's a beast defender 20 years old already playing big time minutes for the Thunder, seven points a night, 50% from the field, 42% from three, almost 80% from the line. Where are the Thunder, like, getting all these guys that are going to be so efficient? Like, it's crazy. Like, 50 and 40 from the field and from three, that's, like, mind-blowing stuff, especially for a 20-year-old. And they just have these guys there. Obviously, the volume isn't, like, extreme. Like, he's only taking five shots a night, but at least he's being productive. You got Isaiah Joe, one of the best three-point shooters in the league, 41% on threes this year on four and a half attempts a night. He's 24 still. He's a, It feels like he's an old 24. Um, you have Jalen Williams, J. Will, who's 21, solid backup, big man depth. Um, they also have like Usman Jang as well, who is 20. We'll see kind of like what's going to happen with him going forward. And then what also, if there was any tiebreaker, their first round pick capital is still kind of crazy. Um, they have Houston's top four protected pick this year. They have Utah's top 10 protected pick this year. They have a swap basically okc and the clippers and there's some other teams involved um next year they can take houston or the clippers pick um they have their pick they have miami's top 14 water pick um and they have philly's top six protected pick shout out the al horford deal 2026 their pick 2027 it's okc denver top five they could swap with the clippers if they want to 2028 they could swap with dallas if they want to um and then 2029 they have denver top five so i think like when you also look at constructing your draft capital that sam sam Presti has done I think you could value these swaps over just having outright picks because obviously you don't want to take three rookies. The odds of them getting all playing time, some to none, and odds of you drafting three rookies also some to none because how are you going to have kind of all that capital to do so? So I think his ability to just get a swap, like there's a good chance that OKC is better than Dallas in 2028. So now you know you have that in your back pocket instead of maybe drafting. I mean, it would be nice to still have your first round pick at you would hope it's at 30, right? But you know what? If you weren't going to get that first round pick, it's still nice to get the swap where you can maybe end up with pick 15 when you just had maybe a championship caliber season in 2028. So OKC was my clear number one. Um, there could be debate because of what the number two team has at their top. And they are kind of like carried about that. So carried by this guy. So number two, San Antonio. When I originally constructed this, I had them at four. But I'm like, you know what? The top end guy of Victor Wembanyama, and I think that's like huge. Like having your franchise guy in your young core. Now for OKC, I still kept in mind that they have Shea. So the depth that they have and the quantity is okay um, compared to not having like that top guy. But who knows? J-Dub could be a top guy. So going to San Antonio at two, obviously Victor Wembanyama. Um, 20 years old, is already playing like a top 15-ish guy in the league already in his rookie year. When he was 19 years old to start the year, you could say he's top 15. I think next year, just for 2025, you could say he's like a top 10 guy going into the year. Um, so it's incredible kind of like how he's been so good already and he's living up to expectations on both ends of the floor. I know the Spurs haven't been great this year, um, but Wemby should continue to get better as long as they're building around him, which they have the cap flexibility, the roster construction, and the draft capital to do so. You have Devin Vassell, 23 years old, putting up 19 points, four assists, four rebounds a night. The efficient is there has defensive potential still so i'm not worried about him on that end of the floor you have Keldon johnson who's also 24 years old probably taking somewhat of a little bit of a step back when it looks like uh, like that prestige of like prospectness kind of going into this year maybe you thought he'd be a little bit more efficient more impactful on the defensive side of the ball but he's still 24 he's making a decent amount of money but it's tradable 100 tradable you have jeremy showing at 20 years old um averaging 11 and a half points six and a half rebounds three and a half assists i don't know like his efficiency has not been great this year but i don't also think he's supposed to be like 
a top three guy when you're constructing this roster going into long term. He's going to be a nice complimentary piece that could do um, other things well that you may not need from like a top end scorer or maybe a facilitator on your team. Uh, you also have Trey Jones at 24. I mean, at worst, he's a solid backup point guard going forward. Uh, you still have the uh, later first round picks in the Jeremy Shohan 2022 class and Malachi Branham, who's shown some flashes as of late. Um, and then Blake Wesley as well, who kind of shown some flashes um, when he's playing, but obviously playing time is just going to get thinner and thinner with this team having cap space and potentially two first round picks. Um, so what also helps San Antonio is their draft capital. 2024, they have Charlotte's top 14 protected pick. Obviously they're not getting that. They have Toronto's top six protected pick. So there is a chance that pick could fall to seven or eight. Um, and that's from the Jakob Pertl trade. Like what a phenomenal move by Toronto. And then they have their first round pick, which should be in the top five. Uh, next year in 25, you have Chicago's top 10 protected first rounder from the DeMar DeRozan sign and trade. Great job getting a first for him. Uh, you have Atlanta's first round pick from the DeJounte Murray trade, and you have your pick. And the way Atlanta's looking, that pick could have some value. Um, in 2026, they could swap with Atlanta, and these two teams are kind of going in opposite directions, which is good uh, for San Antonio as long as they're continuing to get better. Uh, in 2027, they have their first and Atlanta's first. Yeah, like that DeJounte Murray trade um, capital, like draft capital has not even kicked in yet, which is great for San Antonio. In 2028, they have a swap with Boston. I doubt, I, who knows? And 2028 is very far from now. You'd think Boston is still gonna be good, but San Antonio is probably gonna be good. So that might not be too valuable, but that's from the Derek White trade. And then they have their first in 2029 as well. So uh, this team has the top end guy in Victor Wimbanyama, who's almost as good as everybody else on this list currently. I think maybe there's like one player that's better than him right now, maybe two. Maybe if you want to say, but like going forward, he's the best probably building block out of anybody here. Um, so San Antonio is coming into number two. Um, and it's still a solid supporting cast and it's only going to get better. Um, this team is like a solid drafting team, but it's been weird because like they've whiffed on the primo pick. You can, I'm not saying they whiffed on uh, Sohan, Branham, or Wesley yet. Um, like Keldon Johnson was what, like 29th overall? Fine with that. Vassell was like 11th overall. Um, and then like in 2016, they got what? DeJounte Murray, 29th. Derek White, uh, 29th and 2017. Um, but yeah, like obviously the Joshua Primo pick was not very good. Uh, so let's go here to number three where we have the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic. And that's like the most catchiest thing ever. And I have no idea where that uh, came from. And I'm not like on TikTok at all. And I, I think that's where it originated from. But like when I saw the Knicks beat them and like I, I just heard that noise, I was like, wow, this is like the most catchiest thing ever. So we got the Magic coming in at number three. Um, they have their guy as well, Paolo Bancaro, 21 years old. And is playing like a number one. like, And what's also, I think, helps the Magic young, young core, we're seeing them win this year. That's why I kind of had them at number three over my number four team is because this young core is already doing it. They're 41 and 28 right now. They're one of the best defensive teams in the league. And a lot of their like rotational guys are kind of mentioned here, or at least some of them. So it's not like they're being led by guys north of 24, like their Fultzes and Mo Wagners of the world and like your Joe Ingles. Like this is a lot of the, like the three most important players this year are in this young core. Um, so yeah, you got Paolo Bancaro at 21 years old, 23 points, seven rebounds, five assists this year, was an all-star, was on Team USA last year for the FIBA World Cup. Like as good of a building block as you can get, the number one overall pick in that 2022 draft. You have Franz Wagner, who I wouldn't say has really excelled this year, but it's still been pretty solid. 20 points a night, four assists, five and a half rebounds, still just 22 years old. Just a little concerning about the three-point shooting. But Jalen Suggs has taken such a huge step this year defensively as a complimentary piece to Paolo and Franz. And I think like when I watched him at Gonzaga, I really thought, okay, this guy could be a lead ball handler and maybe a franchise point guard for a team. But I think this is the perfect role for him. We're not asking him to do too much, but you're asking him to be that three and D guy can facilitate as well. Um, maybe not as what we thought coming out of Gonzaga, but still well enough to be a nice connector piece to Paolo and Franz. Wendell Carter Jr. is still 24 years old. So shout out to him. There's still some guys like from the 2018 class that are, uh, and like style big man, fine contract. I know he's had some injuries this year. Anthony Black, they just drafted sixth overall is 20. Uh, Cole Anthony, the 15th overall pick in 2020 is 23. Solid bench scoring guard. You would like the efficiency to be a little bit better. Um, they have Caleb Houston, who's 21. They have Jed Howard, who's 20. Like that's a solid young core piece. And obviously they have their top guy in Paolo Bancaro. I value that too. I think like towards the end of this list, we may get to some guys like we'll get to an honorable mention that you may be surprised doesn't make this list. And it's because they don't have like maybe that franchise guy in their young core. Um, so they have their first rounder this year. Um, they have their first rounder next year, maybe a Denver first. It depends on like what OKC does with it. Um, and then in 2026, they have their pick and a swap best uh, with Phoenix as well. So Orlando um, at least has their first round picks too. And they have the young core where they could maybe swing a trade later on. They're coming in at number three. Um, coming in at number four, we got the Houston Rockets. Um, 
You would think they, I, I don't know. I think it's like you're content with this season if you're Houston. Obviously, this is the first year under Ime Odoka. They've been playing very well as of late. Um, they are 33 and 35. Um, they had like a rough stretch. I feel like, I don't know if it was the beginning of March, end of February. They obviously got off to a good start, but you'll take this season. Even if they end up 38 and 44 and you're six games under 500, like this is good. This OKC core has been at the bottom of the NBA in the Western Conference over the last like couple years since they traded away James Harden. So this is such a great step in the right direction. They found their head coach um, and they have a breakout star. Unfortunately, he's going to be out for the year still, but like Alperen Shangun, uh, he's 21 years old. He's averaging 21 points, nine rebounds, five assists a night, and looks like your franchise center and kind of has like surpass some of these other top picks like they like Jabari Smith who went third overall Jalen Green who went second overall as their top guy going forward which is great um just mentioned Jabari Smith Jr still just 20 years old and we knew coming out of Auburn he was going to take a little bit more time to develop and I think we've seen those flashes this year this roster could look a little bit different next year um as well but you know, I, I hope they continue to prioritize his development. Uh, they have Jalen Green. Um, he is, he's something, man. Like, he got off to an okay start and then had some really rough stretches. But then, like, over his last couple games, he's been really good. Like, that game, um, like, last night, or was it last night? Yeah, last night against Washington, he had 42 points and 10 rebounds. <laughs> like, and then 26 points against Cleveland in a nice win. And then they beat Washington again where he had 37. There's some games where the efficiency is horrible. But then there's some games where, like, he looks like he could be your franchise shooting guard. So, they'll have to make a decision. I I think with the rookie extensions due this offseason, I wouldn't really rush into signing him. I think you can do what like maybe Philly did with Tyrese Maxey. Um, you can, he's restricted next year. So you can always sign him next year and have really no risk to that at all. And if you see him really work on that efficiency in 2025, you can be like, all right, we're comfortable giving this guy the rookie max or a decent amount. Because like 34% from three's rookie year, 33% the following year, down to 32% this year. You'd like for that to be a little bit better. The field goal percentage has never been above 42%. Um, the playmaking is fine. You want it to maybe take a next step. Um, I think like before Fred Van Vliet, he could have seen some point guard run for sure with all the Kevin Porter Jr. stuff. But you know, at least you're seeing some encouragement as of late from Jalen Green. You have Tari Eason, um, 22 years old as well. One of my favorite prospects coming out of that draft um, out of LSU. We haven't seen him too much this year. So hopefully we see him fully healthy next year because this guy could be a like the Jalen Suggs of this team, basically. Someone that's going to hustle, rebound, defend, and be a perfect complimentary piece to your top end guys. You have Amen Thompson, who obviously wasn't going to see too much run this year behind Fred Van Vliet on this team and like other veteran like um, Aaron Holiday. We've seen him a little bit more, um, pretty much second half of the year. And this dude is one of the best defenders in the league already. Uh, I wonder how good his playmaking ability is going to be, but uh, hopefully next year. I don't know though. I want to see him as like the starting point guard, but with Fred Van Vliet on this team, it's going to be tough to do so. Um, but I think Fred Van Vliet has helped this team's direction and hasn't like stumped his development. He's still so young. He's 21 years old. Um, and then you have Cam Whitmore at 19 and, and flashes this year is a straight bucket already and has been very efficient. 46% from the field, 36% um, from three. Uh, and, and he looks like he could be a good um, bench like scoring piece. And you got him, what, 19, 20th in the draft or wherever he ended up going. Uh, so you hope that he could be that guy for you off the bench. But he does need to work on his playmaking ability. And yeah, he did go 20th, just double checking that. So um, Houston's picks are interesting. So their top four pick this year goes to OKC. So if they get the fifth pick, that will suck a little bit. And it's probably not going to be in the top four unless they get lucky on lottery night. So it's good that they're winning games. Like give OKC the the ninth or 10th overall pick. You don't want to give them uh, number five. Uh, but they get Brooklyn's first rounder. And Brooklyn's been horrible as of late. So you hope Brooklyn falls out of the plan um, and it, like Atlanta beats them out, which I, I don't know if they will, honestly. So the Atlanta is... 13, 28, Brooklyn is 26 and 43. You know what? You'd think Atlanta would do so. And then that pick is going to be already top 10 and then it could get lucky. I don't think there's any protections on it as well, which I can't wait. They give up unprotected first for James Harden, but that's who he was in Houston. So I guess, I don't know. Brooklyn obviously regrets that. Uh, they own um, their swap with Brooklyn next year. So Houston's treading in the right direction. Brooklyn isn't. So then you think, okay, they're going to get maybe a top 10 pick again next year via Brooklyn. They could also get another swap um because they have a swap with okc um and that one's a little bit more complicated but they have the brooklyn pick which is more valuable than their pick going forward they um they own the swap again with brooklyn in 26 and then in 2020 or excuse me they own brooklyn's pick in 2026 which is even like this is like 
uh, getting more like exciting about their future draft capital just because of Brooklyn's like current team could, or structure and in 2027 another swap with Brooklyn so they should have some audio perks going forward even though they don't have all their first rounders but Houston coming in there at number four number five we got the Detroit Pistons I kind of forgot about them when I was initially constructing this but they do have I'm not going to say the utmost quality but a decent enough quantity and these guys are still solid going forward so they have Kate Cunningham, um, who is their top guy, the number one overall pick, excuse me, from the 2021 draft. And I'm still high on Kate Cunningham. In a redraft, I would still take him number one. I still think he has all NBA potential. Obviously, we've seen guys make all-star games from this class, and we've seen like Shane Goon break out. Scotty Barnes won rookie of the year and was an all-star. Evan Mobley's playing big time minutes on a playoff team. Um, but I think Cade, like, we know how bad the situation in Detroit has been, um, and he's been through multiple head coaches now, and he's shown enough flashes on a team that the supporting cast hasn't been great. They've been playing better, obviously, in the second half of the season, but 22 points, seven and a half assists, love that, four rebounds a night, and the efficiency I was a little worried about, but it's been getting so much better. 45 from the field, 35 from three on good volume, and 87% from the line. Cade's gonna be an all-star, I think, next year. I think he can be an all-star for sure. They have Isaiah Stewart, who's 22 years old. Good bruiser inside. Uh, big man that can space the floor. Just has to kind of deal with maybe some of the anger stuff. Obviously, the Juju Banks thing is not great for his future, but he's on a good contract as well. Jaden Ivey, 21 years old. He's been playing, I want to say, better lately. I think he's been inconsistent at times as well. Um, but, I mean, he had a good game um, last night. But there was a stretch. I want to say, is that like mid-February where he was just like on a tear and you know hopefully like Monty Williams is finally prioritizing his development playing him a little bit more because that was really weird to start off the year they have Jalen Duran who's 20 years old still looks like he could be your franchise center as long as he could stay healthy you have a sort Thompson who they just took fifth overall already one of the league's best defenders as well on the perimeter um just definitely needs to work on that outside jumper or just maybe transition him into a four um I mean it's, it's going to be tough with the lineups with the Sore Thompson and Jalen Duren both out there at the same time, but um, he could still be a good bench piece. Uh, Marcus Sasser, I think they found something there late in the first round in this most recent draft. He's 23 years old. And Quinn Grimes, who they got in the Bojan Bogdanovic trade. Good 3 and D guy. Hopefully uh, you get the three down, but good defender already at 23. Detroit owns or... There's one pick that they have to give to the Knicks. It's top 14 protected. We'll see if that ever even goes to the Knicks or becomes seconds. And they pretty much own every other first round pick. Uh, they don't have any first from any other teams, but they do have at least some of their draft capital to go out and make a move. Um, like I said, this team has been playing somewhat better as of late. Like Washington's worse than them um, in the in the Eastern Conference now. You think Detroit is going to add another top five pick? We'll see if they trade it. I mean, adding an Alexander Saar, adding a Reed. Mm, I don't know how about Reed Shepard on this team, but like a Zachary Sachet, a Tijon Salon, a Filipowski. Like, ah, Filipowski probably isn't that exciting to Pistons fans this year. Um, a Ron Holland, a Montez Buzelis. Like, there are def is definitely some talented guys. Probably would like to add a wing, a four um, on this team next year. And there is definitely that type of talent in this draft. So, Detroit, you still got something going forward and you should be exciting. Hopefully, though, you get your Houston Rockets jump next year because if you spend next year, also bottom of the Eastern Conference with less than 20 wins on the year, 25 wins. It's not that exciting. So coming in at number six, honestly, I don't know. I made this one may be a little bit debatable. Um, they kind of snuck in last second here. Um, and that's the New Orleans Pelicans. So the Pelicans had the 11th youngest roster, kind of, I think, at midseason at 25 and a half. Um, they have four guys that kind of make this cut. And first one is Dyson Daniels at 20. Now, D Daniels has not shown as much progression as you, as you would have liked. Uh, he was in that 22 draft. So this is only his sophomore year. He's 20 years old. Um, can be such a good defender when he's healthy. But um, he's had injuries this year. He's had the... Uh, was it the meniscus tear? Um, and you can see the potential. I liked him coming out of the G League Ignite. And hopefully next year he's fully healthy and he can be a little bit more consistent with his efficiency. You have Jordan Hawkins. Like, love that pick for them. End of the lottery last year. Winner out of the gate. Good 3 and D guy for them. Uh, Trey Murphy. Like, dude, when this guy is healthy, he's one of the best shooters in the NBA and is so much fun to watch. Like, torched my Knicks the other week. Um, and it looks like a real good number, like, four piece for this team as they're going to be making the playoffs offensively. And then um, you have Zion Williamson, who's 23. And if we're getting healthy Zion, if we're getting playmaking ability Zion, I wanted to have him here. I did. Uh, he's played 57 games this year. He might be eligible for these awards if he hits 65 games. It looks like he may. Um, the three-point shot is like, I don't know if that's ever going to come around, but like you're liking to see the increase in playmaking and we could see some more points on going forward. And it looks like he's getting skinnier as well and losing weight. So that's great for Zion. And that's why I think like they could have their franchise guy here again. And 
Uh, I'm excited about this team's future. I know, like, obviously, Ingram's above 25. It's Ethan McCollum. Herb Jones just hit 25 as well. Oh, a couple months ago, but he would have obviously been such a good piece to put in here. But they also have some draft capital. So that gave them a tiebreaker over my seventh team. Um, and they have a swap with Milwaukee this year which they're not going to probably give. You'd think Milwaukee's going to end up better than them, at least playoff-wise. They can control the Lakers' first-round pick this year or opt for it next year. I guess they would want to know what's going on with LeBron. And I mean, if they end up losing the play-in tournament, that's going to be a lottery pick. Uh, they have their first next year. They have a swap with Milwaukee in 2026. So could they be better than Milwaukee in 26? Sure, with Dave getting up there in age and that team definitely getting up there in age overall. And then 2027, they have Milwaukee's first, which could be very valuable. And they also have their first round picks going forward to make a move. I think the Pelicans, if you want to tell me they're too high, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I just kind of like the, the I guess, four sub of Dyson Daniels, Jordan Hawkins, Trey Murphy, and Zion with some draft capital going forward. So at number seven, maybe also a surprising team as well, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yes. So um, they have their top end guy. They have their franchise guy. Um, their draft capital obviously isn't great from the Rudy Gobert trade, but this young core is already paying dividends. Now, obviously, like Mike Conley, Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns are big reasons why they're really good. Um, and they're obviously not part of this young core, but their top guy is the most important guy. And that's Anthony Edwards, who's still just 22 years old. 22! And he's already a borderline top 10 guy overall in this league, probably having a top 10 overall season this year and is the best player on one of the best teams in the Western Conference. Um, and he is just a, a new highlight reel every night. 27 points, five assists, five and a half rebounds this year. The efficiency is there. And when he like tries a beast on the defensive side of the floor, I, I feel like when it matters the most too. Um, so I think like that was a big part why the Timberwolves here, they don't have the quantity, but they have some quality guys so this is where it gets kind of i think a little bit difficult like this back half of the top 10 like i mentioned before um jaden mcdaniels they also have and like a, i think their top three are like i know they are they're under contract so i think that's a big part too uh with their young core like jaden mcdaniels on that extension you could think it's an overpay you may not um like the offense i feel like has been inconsistent as you'd like it to be um or you maybe want a little bit more but I don't know. I think like the defense is still obviously there and he's 23 years old. And I think you'll take that as somebody that's like maybe your fifth most important guy right now. Um, and he's paying dividends um, as a late first rounder. Nas Reed as well, 24 years old, still fits this criteria. The dude could be averaging 20 points and like 10 rebounds um, on good efficiency if he was starting on any other team. Like you throw Nas Reed on the Washington Wizards, this man is cooking, cooking. And he's been playing well um, in the absence of Carl Anthony Towns. He's had some good scoring games um, and they're gonna need him. They're gonna need him to show up as well. I know he's had like an injury. I think he's got like a head injury right now, um, but he could be very effective for this team and is very important to them going forward at 24. Um, two guys that really haven't played much, but I love the potential of Leonard Miller. I liked him a ton coming out of the G League Ignite. Um, and I thought it was a steal to get him in the second round for Minnesota. Wendell Moore, still 22, former first round pick. Jerry's probably out on him now um, as ever being like an important guy to this team, but still wanted to mention the former first rounder. Troy Brown is 24 years old as well. And it has given them some quality minutes at times this year. So I wanted to mention that in Naw, uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker, who has been important to them, unfortunately does not make this as he is 25. Uh, he was from that 2019 draft. He actually, like, yeah, he's been 25 for a little bit there. So Minnesota owns their first this year, but goes to Utah 25, swap with Utah 26. They're getting the swap force to that, obviously from the Gobert trade. 2027 goes to Utah. They get their first in 28, and then 2029 goes to Utah. So three picks outright going to Utah. There's a swap in there. Um, their draft capital situation is a great. I don't know if that would force them to be any higher, but I think just having Anthony Edwards and not just Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels and Nas Reed, I wanted to put them there at seven. But if you're like, Matt, like that's just not enough young guys, that's perfectly fine with me. And I don't mind dropping them. I don't like, I wasn't going to die on the Minnesota Timberwolves top 10 hill, but I wanted to see how much I wanted to value Anthony Edwards. And I do because you have a top 10 guy in the league that's 22 years old. I feel like that's alone has got to help you out with your young core. I like held Wemby to such a high standard for the Spurs. I want to do the same with the Timberwolves and that earns them a top 10 spot. So coming in at number eight, um, they have actually like way more guys than I thought. And they have their, I don't know if like their 1A guy, we'll see. I know he's been not great as of late or at least post All-Star break. I know he's been dealing with an injury that um, is going to be the Indiana Pacers. So obviously I'm talking about Tyrese Halliburton and um, yeah, has not been really efficient since like the all-star break uh, people were like he sold his soul for the all-star break and over his last i'm just kind of pulling up uh the strict game log that i want to talk about 17 games 15 and a half points still getting you 10 assists tonight 41 percent from the field 26 percent from three not ideal not ideal whatsoever for halliburton but the dude is still um 23 years old 
23 years old, yes, and is one of the best point guards in the game, one of the best passers in the game, was an all-star starter this year. I'm still going to give Halliburton his respect. I think, like, December-ish, January-ish, you ask, like, Halliburton or Edwards, there's some debate there. Now it's obviously clearly Edwards, but I think Halliburton still has, like, top 15 player in the week potential. And he's, I know he's fallen off a little bit, but he's still played, like, a top 30-ish guy this year. Um, and, like, pure point guard play, Still probably been top five this year, top six this year. Um, so I want to give Halliburton that respect. He's on that second contract, wants to play in Indiana. He's going to be there for a long time, and he's still just 23 years old. Uh, you have Aaron Neesmith, 24 years old, one of the best three-point shooters in the league. Uh, he's from that 2020 draft class. Um, Benedict Matherin from the 2022 draft class, 21 years old. He's out for the year, but still could look like he could be a good bench score for them, and the three-point efficiency was good this year. Andrew Nemard is 24. Nice rotational point guard that they found um, early in the second round. Jalen Smith's 23. He could be gone at the end of the year, but still a nice body that's 23 years old. Um, a nice big man depth. Isaiah Jackson, 22 years old. So one of those guys will probably be back as like the backup big man behind Miles Turner next year. Ben Shepard was a first-round pick last year. Um, so I wanted to mention him. Good three-point shooter. Uh, hasn't had too much playing time on this team um, out of Belmont. And then Jairus Walker, who we haven't seen play too much this year. I don't know... If I'm like, I think I'm a little disappointed in the in the Pacers development of him this year because I thought he was NBA ready, like more NBA ready than like Taylor Hendricks. And we've kind of seen more Hendricks at times, I feel like. Like Walker spent a lot of time with the Mad Ants um, in Fort Fort Wayne, Fort Worth, Fort Wayne, um, for Indiana and like their G League team. And I know they had Obi Toppin, um, who's 25. Uh, he's 25, yeah, so he didn't make this list. But uh, they have Obi Toppin. Obviously, they traded for Pascal Siakam. So that hurts Walker's development a little bit, and they have Miles Turner at the five. So I don't know. I'm just a little upset with the way they handled uh, Jairus Walker's rookie year because I thought he was ready out of the gate. Um, and then their first round pick this year is going to go to Toronto. Um, and then uh, they had their first in 2025. 2026, I was looking, I swore it went to Toronto, but it could have been another pick. But either way, like um, they have their 2027 and onwards. So they still have some draft capital down the line, um, but they have a lot of depth, I think, with their young core. So that's why they made the list at number eight. Coming in at number nine, we have the Toronto Raptors, another tough team to rank, but like the Indiana Pacers, I don't think he's as good as like Anthony Edwards, um, but like you could say he's maybe more valuable than Zion Williamson. Like they have their franchise guy in Scotty Barnes, who's just 22 years old. So I think that like alone was like, I got to put the Raptors here in the top 10. Now I hated the Yaka Pertle trade when it happened and they may lose out on um, a lottery pick this year if they fall outside the top six and it goes to San Antonio. But I think just like moving on from from Siakam and Anadobi, like made this young core solid. Like you have Scotty Barnes at 22 years old. Like I said, was an all-star this year. 20 points per game, eight rebounds, six assists. The efficiency is much better. Has taken a step in year number two. Now the three-point shot has fallen a little bit, but it, like I said, 22 years old, can be a good defender, can be like your point guard or your lead ball handler for the future. So just having that guy is so huge. Um, like the Magic have their guy in Paolo. Spurs have their guy in Wemby. I don't think Barnes is up to that like standard and I'd rather have those two over Barnes, but I feel good about Barnes as your lead guy going forward, at least to find out what he is from his age 22 to 24 years. Can he be your 1A? Can he be your 1B? But either way, they got Barnes um, and he will get the rookie max probably at the end of the year. Um, RJ Barrett has been playing pretty well for the Toronto Raptors this year, ever since he got traded over in the Ananobi deal. He's still just 23 years old. And this is what, his fifth year in the NBA. Um, and his numbers look pretty good in Toronto. He's gone from 18 points to almost 21 points a night, but the efficiency is what stands out. Like in 27 games, which is more than what he did for the Knicks this year, he's gone from 42% from the field to 55% from the field, 33% from three to 41% from three. Um, the free throw percentage though, I don't know. He might've sold his soul for that because he's gone from 83% of the line to 59% um, from the line. So maybe Darko uh, or Djokovic or Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster knew like, all right, RJ, you're focusing way too much on free throws. Just worry about your three point jumper. And I'd rather you be a good three-point shooter than a good free throw shooter. So you'll take that any day of the week. Uh, like I said, he's only 23 years old still. You have Emmanuel Quickly, who I just knew, like, like, or everyone kind of just knew, like once he got traded to Toronto in a much larger role um, because he was backing up Jalen Brunson, he was going to break out. I mean, his points have gone up from 15 to 18. The efficiency is taking a little bit of a hit overall on twos, um, like overall field goal percentage. 45% as a Nick to 42% as a Raptor. But the three-point percentage has gone up like slightly from 39.5% to 39.7%. But he's taking a three and a half more a night. The free throw percentage is still pretty solid, but the playmaking ability is there. Like six and a half assists as a Raptor. And he's a really good defender. I think still an underrated defender because I mean, like the Raptors haven't really been much in the news. He fell just short of six men of the year last year. And he's a true building block. Like I'd rather have Emmanuel quickly and RJ Barrett or like, Emmanuel quickly or RJ Barrett, like whoever you value more or less, excuse me, as my number third young core guy 
then maybe like Jairus Walker, um, maybe like Nas Reed, probably like Jordan Hawk. Yeah, definitely Jordan Hawkins. Uh, going to the Pistons, like you have Cade one. I don't even know who number two is. Ivy threes. I'd probably rather have them than Jalen Duran. For the Rockets, Shangun, then Green. And then it's like Smith or Thompson. Like, I think they're right there of young core pieces. So I'll, honestly, like looking back on this, I may have the Raptors too low. Like I said, though, their first round pick this year could go to San Antonio if it's outside the top six. Um, they get Indiana's first though, top three protected from the Siakam deal. They have their first next year. Um, they may get Indiana's first, like I said, going back to Indiana in 2026. And then 2027, um, they have their first. So they still have like mostly all their first round picks as well going forward. So I may have the Raptors too low now that I'm speaking this out loud. Like I said, it's also more of a workshop as well as we're talking about this. So for the 10th spot, I got three teams that I wanted to put here. Um, so I'll, I'll say who I went with. You may have been like a, a team of this bad team this year. And you're like, wow, Matt, you haven't mentioned this yet. What the heck? Um, Charlotte Hornets coming in at number 10. Yeah, uh, you can let me know if this is too low. But LaMelo Ball um, obviously headlines this team at 22 years old. Seems like he's the franchise guy, right? And I do like LaMelo Ball maybe will become underrated. But you know what? We will dock Zion for not staying healthy. LaMelo has not stayed healthy three of his four years in this league. 51 games as a rookie. Um, out of 70, out of 72 possible games, then he was healthy his second year, and they, I believe, were the playing tournament team that year. Um, in 2022, I believe so. Either way, like if it was 21 or 22, I think it was 22. But now I kind of want to double check this because I don't want to be wrong about this. Um, just because it's just so easy to find. So they were a playing tournament team in 22. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, and Lamelo Ball was healthy and they were good and he was an all star. And he was obviously the rookie of the year um, from his class as well. But 36 games last year, 22 games this year. I don't know, man. That's a little nerve wracking. And like, has he bought into the team? I think the culture has been a kind of a mess. Um, you got maybe some of the veterans that are good players, but maybe just not leaders. Like maybe Rozier wasn't that for them. I don't think Gordon Hayward was that for them. PJ Washington, even though we drafted in 2019, had to be kind of a leader of this squad. Um, they got them out. Hopefully some new veterans next year. I mean, Lamel Ball is still one of the better young point guards in the league and is still only 22 years old. So like, that's why I wanted to give the Charlotte Hornets credit. They hit on the Brandon Miller pick. Um, so shout out to them. He's 21 years old and he's looked phenomenal for a bad environment in his rookie year on both ends of the floor. He's averaging 17 points, four rebounds, two and a half assists, 43% from the field, 37% from three, and has defensive upside. Uh, you have Trey Mann, who they got in the Gordon Hayward trade. Looks promising as a backup guard at 22. Mark Williams, I know he's been hurt this year, but still see the flashes for him to be your long -time fi or long term five, 22 years old. And then you have two 19-year-olds off the bench, uh, Nick Smith Jr. and Amari Belli from this past draft class, um, in which I like Nick Smith a ton coming out of Arkansas. I like that as a late first rounder. Still have a lot of stock in Nick Smith. And then um, Amari Bailey, who was your second rounder, is still 19 as well and could be somewhat off the bench for you going forward. Maybe not the most exciting young core pieces, but still, like, these guys are 19 years old. Like, 19. Um, they still have so much time to, like, uh, and room to grow and develop. 20, 24. Their first rounders, top 14 is San Antonio. Um, that has been passed around to like the Knicks at a the time. Um, then was in the Cam Reddish trade um, to the Hawks when the Knicks got Cam Reddish and then went to San Antonio in the DeJounte Murray trade. Um, but basically going forward, their first in 25, their first in 26. Obviously that top 14 could, it's probably, I don't know. You hope they're good. So they end up, it ends up not going back to Charlotte, but it could become seconds. Um, and then in 2027, they got three first rounders. They got their first. They have Miami's top 14 water pick, which becomes unprotected in 28 from the Rozier deal. And they have Dallas's top two protected first round picks. So they could have three first round picks in 2027. So they have some draft capital as well. And I like their core of Lamelo Miller and Mark Williams. Miles Bridges, 25. I don't know if he's going to be back next year um, as well. So yeah, Hornets coming in at number 10. Um, honorable mention, Portland Trailblazers. Anthony Simons is 24. Shaden Sharp, 20. Scoots, 19. Delano Banton, who's been playing well this year, 24. Tumani Kamara, 23. Jabari Walker, 21. Chris Murray, 23. I don't know that they have their guy, though. Like, Charlotte seems like they have their guy in Lamelo. Toronto has their guy in Scotty. Pacers have their guy in Halliburton. Minnesota, Anthony Edwards. Pelican, Zion. Pistons, Cade. Rockets, seems like Shane Goon. Um, yeah, probably Shane Goon. Magic, Paolo. Um, Spurs, Wemby. And then, obviously, I talked about the Thunder's kind of, like, core going forward. Is... Anthony Simon's the guy. I don't know if he's like your franchise building block. Like he's been good this year, but the Blazers obviously haven't been a winning team. And like their roster hasn't been bad, but they've had a ton of injuries. Like Simon's has dealt with injuries. Um, Shaded Sharp's dealt with injuries. Obviously, Robert Williams is out before the season even started. Brogdon's dealt with injuries. Um, it's weird. Um, Shaded Sharp, 20, like you wanted a bigger jump. People even had him high in the most improved conversation. We'll see. Uh, but he's 20. He'll be fine. I still have a lot of Shaden Sharp stock. Scoot Henderson, 19. We're going to give him more time, but 
you can't lie. It's been disappointing for the hype he had as a rookie coming in. Um, and then like Banton, Kamara, Walker, Murray, find depth pieces in your young core. Uh, they have draft capital, obviously, which helped. Um, top 14, their pick goes to Chicago this year. Obviously, they're going to keep that. So I think it could become seconds eventually. Um, that was for Larry Nance. What a trade, right? Um, then they have their first round picks. They have a swap with Milwaukee, swap best in 28. Um, and then in 2029, they have their first, Milwaukee's first. Um, and Boston's first from Drew Holiday and Damian Lower trade. So that's pretty good. And then they have a swap with Milwaukee in 2030. You assume that they're going to move maybe Tom Ward. I don't know if they'll get a first for him with his injury concerns, but they'll move Brogdon in the offseason, maybe try to accumulate more draft capital. Some team may want Jeremy Grant. Um, some team may want DeAndre Aiden. So we'll see. Aiden is 25, so he didn't make this cut. They're an honorable mention. I feel like I had good reasoning there. And then same with Utah as well as an honorable mention. Like Keontae George looks promising, but not your franchise guy. Lowry Marketing's 26, so obviously he wasn't making this cut. Taylor Hendricks, 20. Walker Kessler, 22. Taylor Norton Tucker, 23. We'll see if he's like part of their long-term plans. And Bryce Sensible, 20. Like they have their guys, but the reason like why they'd be here is their um, draft capital. Like they could have a swap this year uh, between like the Clippers, Houston, OKC. Their first rounder is top 10 protected to OKC. You'd probably just rather lose it this year um, and end up as, at like 11 or 12. Um, next year, three first round picks um, from Cleveland, Utah, Minnesota. Um, obviously, Cleveland and Minnesota from Gobert and Donovan Mitchell trades. They have a swap with Cleveland and Minnesota in 26. Their first rounder, 2027, they have Cleveland's first, Minnesota's first, their first, and the top four Lakers pick from the Russell Westbrook trade. So they have four picks in 2027. Cleveland swap in 28. Um, and then Cleveland and uh, top five Minnesota protected in 29. So they have plenty of draft capital, but I just didn't know like their quality of their young core. But you could be like, man, you should swap out Utah for New Orleans. I'm okay with that. Honorable mention. And then I also wanted to give some love to Cleveland. Doesn't have draft capital. And really, it's just like two guys. It's like Darius Garland, um, Evan Mobley, which obviously is pretty freaking good. So you can have a reason for having them in the top 10. You have Isaac Okoro and Amani Bates, but um, I don't know if Okoro will see if he's back next year and we'll see if Amani Bates ever becomes something for them. Memphis like still has Ja, like Gigi Jackson. Um, I don't think that Jaron Jackson Jr. Like I just want to actually look up his age real quick. If he's under 20, he's 24. Hmm. All right, if Desmond Bain is 24, I'm screwed. Um, Desmond Bain's 25. All right, so you could also have Memphis in here as well because Memphis has some draft capital. And if you have John Triple J, that's pretty freaking good. And I, I had like Minnesota in here, or no, uh, yeah, I had Minnesota in here. And I had um, New Orleans in here as well. So you could be like, Matt, and like Memphis is going to add a top five potential pick this year. So you could be like, Matt, we should definitely have uh, Memphis in here. So I'm okay with that as well. I think, I think like me, I, I don't, like Jerry Jackson Jr., I thought was kind of, 25 so that's that's on me completely um but yeah like having a elite defender in triple j and then Josh. so i hope you you kept listening and watching to know that i'm okay if you wanted to put memphis at number six and you haven't already commented or turned off because you didn't hear memphis in the top six but i think that's as high as i would put them i don't know like would you rather have memphis or minnesota like anthony edwards over Ja, right clearly and then would you rather have like mcdaniels and reed over Gigi Jackson and Triple J? Probably not. So that's where it could be a debate. Pelicans as well. At least Pelicans have some draft capital. Um, and Memphis has like all their first rounders. Pacers, I don't know. I still like the Pacers young core because they have a lot of quantity of it and don't like own all their first rounders away. But I totally get Memphis being in there um, with Triple J and John Morant. And like just them going forward, I could probably do a little bit on them um, just with like Triple J being 24, Ja being 24, um, Gigi Jackson being, what, 19 this year and has already provided them some good minutes. Like, I mean, Zaire Williams, they already moved off David Roddy and Jake Laravia are 22. Um, don't know how much they're going to be in the future, but Vince Williams is 23. Looks like a legitimate, like, rotational piece for them. Say Tail Dama as well, 23. Um, so, yeah, I disrespected Memphis in this video, so I'm sorry, Memphis fans. I See, like, that's why I'm glad I'm workshopping this. I disrespected Memphis, but they should definitely be here in the top 10. Hope you guys did enjoy. That's going to be it. Just talked about 40 minutes of Young Cores. That was so much fun, though. I had a great time doing that. Uh, if you guys want to let me know on YouTube what you guys think of this, let me know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already, and drop a like. And then if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, like just taking the two seconds out, five-star rating review can go a long way. And I appreciate that. And make sure you're following over there. I love you guys. And I'll catch you guys on Friday, maybe five things Friday coming back. So I'll catch you all there. Peace.